and among other things that he believes it's possible to set up an interim government by the end of May in Iraq despite this violence. What details did he provide to back up this claim? Well, he said actually the job is doable. He said the idea that is an emerging consensus to have a caretaker government made out of technocrats who would uh, only actually serve until the elections, the general elections to be held in January next year. He said that it is doable because there is enough going on and uh, he said actually the caretaker government can be ready by May. Of course that would begin with dissolving the current governing council. On the other hand, he did speak of the situation in Fallujah and in Najaf and in Karbala and in f effect he, was, uh, he, he expressed shock and dismay to use his words at what's going on in as far as uh, attacks from and on mosques and he also pointed out that the governing council should know and does know that if this issue is not resolved peacefully there will be dramatic consequences long lasting and finally he did say that that applies to Najaf and Karbala these are holy places the two holiest cities for Shiites millions of Shiites worldwide not only Iraq and he said these are the places for worship not for a military uh, uh, operations and, and Rahida given the events we've seen today in Fallujah specifically how much will this ongoing conflict in your opinion in this Sunni stronghold complicate matters for the UN diplomatic efforts any of these developments if they are not resolved uh, through uh, peaceful means they will complicate the efforts of the United Nations simply because of security or the lack of it for that matter and uh, that is why Ibrahimi spoke of the interlink between the political process and the security that is necessary for bringing Iraq to um, the 30th of June deadline uh, of transfer of authority to the Iraqis now the thing is that uh, uh, what happens in, uh, uh, in cities as uh, Najaf and, and uh, cities like Karbala it will not leave an impact only on Iraq or Shiites in Iraq it will actually take it further because these are sensitive holy places for millions of Shiites and it will any 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 escalation will hit a raw nerve there so there is still hope that uh, maybe there will be a resolution through peaceful means because the UN in general believes there are no military means for success and I think most members of the Security Council uh, share that view there is a lot of worry in the region for that matter Today, Secretary of State Colin Powell told Reuters that the new interim government would have to cede powers to the U.S. military on all security issues. Now, the French are in strong disagreement with this. Will, you th will do you think this will be the most contentious issue when the council debates a new U.N. resolution dealing with the Iraqi government that will ultimately take over? The most important and contentious issue is actually the relationship between that caretaker government and the new name of the occupation in Iraq. It will no longer be an occupation power it will be uh, given another name and therefore there needs to be clarity as to what is that relationship uh, political and, uh, and, uh, and as far as the re of course we know that our troops will be there for quite a long term to come but we need and they will have to reach a certain clarity on that matter secondly in as far as providing security that you know, of course obviously the Iraqis cannot take over uh, all of a sudden but if you do not take in the Iraqis as a partner then I think the job is much harder and probably not doable yeah. so there is a need to give the Iraqis a certain amount of power in as far as the security forces are concerned with the coalition and speaking of that handover John Negroponte the ambassador to Iraq designate told the Senate Foreign Relations Committee today that Iraqis will have quote a lot more sovereignty than they have right now after that June 30th handover but the US will still have a key role in security and the caretaker government won't be able to make laws. How critical is Negroponte's role in diplomatic relations there involving the handover? It will depend on the policy of the United States of America. Uh, Ambassador Negroponte could do his best, could give a better face. Uh, there is a possibility, well, actually there is an impression that Mr. Bremer was very much the Pentagon's man in uh, Baghdad and Mr. Negroponte comes as more of uh, the diplomat, the new face that the United States administration would like to put on the new face. And so uh, it seems that he can do an assuring job but it's bottom line it boils down to what is the policy of the United States at the time he's there. Rahira Dergam, a senior correspondent with Al Hayat newspaper and an MSNBC analyst, thank you for your time this My afternoon. My pleasure, thank you.